Gentlemen, welcome to the retirement ceremony for Captain Shannon Marie Pitt Smith. Before we get started, I ask that you please turn off your cell phones or assure they're in silent mode. I am Captain Eva Van Camp, and I have known Captain Smith since 1993, swap summer at the Coast Guard Academy, and I am honored to serve as the master of ceremonies. Retirement ceremonies are a time-honored tradition marking the end of a Coast Guard member's active service and the beginning of a new chapter for him or her. For military members, remain at the position of attention during the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. For our civilian guests, appropriate protocol is to place your right hand over your heart during the playing of our national anthem. Military members, follow my lead for salutes. Guests, all guests, please follow my directions as when to stand and be seated. We are honored to have members of Captain Smith's family joining us this morning. Captain Smith's mother, Carol High, Captain Smith's husband, Lane Smith, Captain Smith's sister, Michelle Smith, and her nephew and niece, Ronan and Rhea. Her brother-in-law, Leland Smith, is attending remotely. Captain Smith's daughter, Lillian Titus, and granddaughter, Vivian Titus. And also remote, we are honored to have Aunt Julie, Aunt Bessie, Aunt Caroline, and Aunt Lorraine. We are also privileged to have a number of distinguished mentors <coughs> attending today's ceremony. A special welcome to Rear Admiral Rebecca Orr, Assistant Commandant for Intelligence. Rear Admiral Amy Grable, Assistant Commandant for Engineering and Logistics. Mr. Jeffrey Radgowski, Deputy Assistant Commandant for Intelligence. Captain Jan Stevens and Captain Michael Dickey, U.S. Coast Guard retired. Mr. Tom Clark, Mr. Dan Haynes, and Mr. Michael Scott, U.S. civilians now retired. I would like to welcome other officers, enlisted civilian, and all honored guests who are joining us at this celebration. Today we are here to pay tribute to Captain Shannon Smith, United States Coast Guard, who is retiring after 27 years of faithful and honorable service to this nation. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem of the Now, Captain, United States Coast Guard, arriving. Now, Rear Admiral, United States Coast Guard, arriving. Hand salute. Ready, two. Color Guard, present the colors. Colors, forward, march. performed by Commander Amanda Farig and her quintet. And salute. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave Oh, 
Ghost! Ghost turn! Hunt! Chaplain McGarity will now deliver the invocation. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Let us pray. Lord, this is the day you've made, and so we do rejoice. God, we are glad. We rejoice in the life you've ordained, in the blessings of our families and friends. We rejoice with gratitude for our country and for the opportunities we share serving in our Coast Guard. Most of all, we rejoice in your presence. It is your presence which sustains us as we live to carry out that call of service. Thank you for meeting us in this place as we gather to reflect upon and to celebrate the retirement of Captain Shannon Smith. As we celebrate 27 years of faithful service to her country, we look back to recall the many places she has served, the many lives she has touched. Her sacrifice and her dedication have added with the sacrifice and dedication of so many others to ensure our freedom as Americans. Captain Smith's retirement marks the close of one long and illustrious chapter, but also brings with it a unique inspiration to those of us still living out the oath by which we swore. So God, may the events of this time-honored tradition today bring honor and glory to you, and may it bless Captain Smith, her husband Lane, her daughter Lily, and all of her other family. May it enrich them all with the deepest sense of joy and fulfillment. For Lord, we lift this prayer in your mighty and matchless name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Official party, now remove your cover. Mm -hmm. Before I introduce our presiding official, please allow me a moment to reminisce about my classmate, shipmate, and most importantly, my best friend. So if you would indulge in me, I would like to provide just a few anecdotes about our time in the Coast Guard together. Forgive me if I'm a little off. I'm not used to Shannon being on time, but then again, we started at 0600 to get ready. I'll always remember our time at the Coast Guard Academy, but unceremoniously, the one thing that truly sticks out with me most is the time my mom, Anna Hickey, and Shannon all stayed at Hanscom Air Force Base on Liberty. About 0400, we were all up in awe, listening to Shannon saw wood like no other. And I guess I, I assume Lane, are grateful now that she uses a CPAP. I'm going to miss riding in her Miata convertibles. I use the word plural because she started and will now end her impressive career driving Miatas, just 27 years apart. I went riding with her in her latest Miata yesterday. But well, this time we watched the gas gauge more closely than before. <laughs> Most recently, I enjoyed perusing the artificial intelligence article she sends me and listening to her geeking out about the newest technology the Coast Guard needs to acquire and all the resources it would take to catch up to, say, DOD and probably Russia and China. I know in my head what she is saying is very important, but not understanding hardly any of what she is saying, it does help put me to sleep. <laughs> I don't know any more passionate person about posturing the Coast Guard for the future, despite the other competing needs of the Coast Guard. Imagine how difficult it must be to constantly try to persuade a service to redirect funding from our national security cutter to go to protecting against a threat only a few truly understand. While I heap accolades of how unselfish Shannon is, I hate to say that I do think it is selfish that Shannon is going to be moving to Colorado, denying my family our routine free cat crash pad in D.C. Seriously, it's an honor to be part of Shannon's retirement celebration. She truly had a distinguished career and is an amazing friend, mentor, role model, and leader. My whole family, especially my kids, have become to known Auntie Shannon is going to miss you on the East Coast, but I know Colorado is where you're meant to be. So instead of suffering the I-94 corridor, I will pack up my skis and head out this winter. I could talk forever about what a wonderful friend, colleague, and Coast Guard officer Shannon is, but we would be here all day. So back to the script. 
The presiding official for today's ceremony is Rear Admiral Michael Ryan, U.S. Coast Guard, recently retired as the Deputy for Operations, Policy, and Capabilities. Rear Admiral Ryan has been a mentor to Captain Smith, and like her, an important change agent in the Coast Guard's artificial intelligence capability, which Captain Smith has tirelessly worked on these past few years. Rear Admiral Ryan had his distinguished career with numerous afloat and command, shore commands. His shore commands were responsible for maintaining and advancing the Coast Guard's electronic, computer, and cyber system capabilities. Captain Smith would serve in many of the same units as Rear Admiral Ryan, such as Electronic System Support Unit St. Louis, the Operations Systems Center, C5I Service Center, CG6, and Coast Guard Cyber Command. They both worked hard to improve many of the same capabilities that will prepare the Coast Guard to address future threats and challenges within the cyberspace and artificial intelligence domains. In other words, Rear Admiral Ryan and Captain Smith are the folks that can go beyond just restarting the computer when it freezes up and they don't use one, two, three, four as passwords. <laughs> <laughs> the special connection through shared experience and knowledge of these complex capabilities, capabilities that I just assume is magic, is why we are honored to have Rear Admiral Ryan come back from retirement to preside over today's ceremony. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce Rear Admiral Ryan. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, it is a distinct privilege and, and honor when you get those unique opportunities to serve in this capacity. Um, you know, being able to reflect on a member's career, think about the sacrifice, and then share with shipmates, you know, just those types of memories is an incredible opportunity for anybody in our service. And Captain Smith, I'm uh, extremely humbled and proud that uh, you asked me to serve in that capacity today. Um, so thank you so much. To the family, great to see you here this morning. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, you know, what we all can appreciate, how special that type of support network is. But uh, Carol, great to see you here this morning. Nice to meet you. Lane, glad uh, that uh, you found time to bridge back to the East Coast as well. Lily and, and others, uh, Michelle. Um, thanks so much uh, for always being there for Shannon throughout her journey. Um, got some colleagues uh, from the flag and senior executive service in the audience with us today. So uh, thank you so much for being part of this. And you know, when I look across the room, there's a lot of friendly and familiar faces there, but reflective of people that uh, you know had interactions with Captain Smith throughout her journey. So uh, it's a special opportunity to sit here in the room with you. I know we've got a number of others uh, that are out in the remote world. Uh, as Tom Clark said, you know, when he first started, uh, Zoom was only on your camera lens. Today, uh, we've changed that dynamic a little bit. But we do have some titans of Coast Guard technology in the audience with us here today. Dan, Tom, and others, thanks so much. And then uh, a few more out uh, watching remotely. Shannon, you didn't talk too much about class of 97, um, but uh, at least one uh, Academy class being in the room. How many others? John Tapp. Okay, Welcome to uh, that distinguished class as well. You know, uh, Kevin Smith, I just want to say on behalf of our Commandant and the senior leadership of the Coast Guard, I'll start with a congratulations. Uh, what a distinguished 27-year career. You know, one that, uh, if you look back, has to date spanned your entire life's journey as an adult. Um, it's taken you to the far reaches, truly, of the globe, into both uh, the Arctic and the Antarctic. Um, it's been uh, a continuation of your parents' journey and service to our nation. So, Carol, I understand uh, a project manager for the SR-71 SR program. And then uh, your dad likewise finding uh, a calling serving the nation in the APHES uh, program as well. Um, you know, that type of lineage uh, is just a great thing for our nation to be able to perpetuate uh, wearing the cloth of our nation, contributing back to its citizens, and meeting the needs of, you know, a nation that, that needs an active armed force. Uh, so on behalf again of the Commandant, uh, your CG2 leadership team, I'll just say, Congratulations and thank you so much. Um, truly a, uh, a great journey along the way and 
you know, we couldn't be prouder than uh, standing with you today as you celebrate this incredible milestone. For those of you that uh, are wearing the nation's uh, fabric today or maybe have other connections, uh, hopefully you can appreciate military services demanding, without a doubt, across all six armed forces and in whatever time span you choose uh, to serve. The Honor Guard that you saw this morning, you know, are embarking on their career of service uh, early in their tenure, just coming out of basic training, but, uh, you know, being picked out and identified as somebody that can represent and uphold our military ideals day in and day out and do that in a spotlight in venues like this and uh, particularly on the heels and margins of Memorial Day. Our Honor Guard was particularly busy. Uh, they said they haven't had a day off in the last three <coughs> weeks, uh, but representative of, again, what we ask of all of our members, regardless of how seasoned they are in their, their service. So Captain Smith has uh, undoubtedly served where and when needed at all times throughout that entire duration. Uh, she's had capacities in all facets of the technology domain. She spent some time at the Department of Defense, you know, out in uh, your home, future homestead of Colorado, but uh, NORTHCOM is a really active command. I know they put you through your paces for our Coast Guard members. Uh, interact across the joint force with distinction and really on par with all of our military brethren. She's had occasion to uh, really active in the maritime port community, which is you know truly the hallmark of our service. Active on the waterfront, helping to guide our economic lifeblood across our 300 plus ports around this nation. And Shannon did it in one of the busiest uh, ports in the Gulf Coast down in sector Houston, Galveston. If you look back uh, just in her biography, um, you know, somebody that is committed to lifelong earning or lifelong learning, you know, she's got two master's degree, a couple of certificates, you know, just one that uh, she found occasion during an already busy day-to-day uh, -day active, you know, active life and got her master's degree on her own time in addition to our Coast Guard sponsored advanced degree as well. And I know that uh, throughout all of that, it was the support of your family that uh, helped you navigate uh, through those tribulations and trials. And uh, I think we all can appreciate having that type of support network is extremely powerful. It's what gets many people through the day-to-day -day grind, that allows them to overcome the persistent challenge and really that uh, unrelentless pace of operations and activity. You know, and I would just say that uh, if you're fortunate enough and, and fortunate and gifted enough to be a senior officer in our Coast Guard, what a truly incredible feat. Making captain in the United States Coast Guard is like winning the lottery. The odds are about on par with that. But we only afford that opportunity to our best and brightest, those that can lead with distinction, those that understand you know, what it takes to be part of a team. How do they garner and nurture those relationships and partnerships that allow us to meet mission across the entire nation and around the globe as a Maritime Coast Guard? Captain Smith is one of those accomplished leaders. She is one of those technical experts and she's part of a, a really select uh, but incredible team of talent that we've been fortunate to have in our ranks for years in and years out. So, Ken Smith, thank you so much uh, for being uh, one of our senior officers and somebody that's done it with such great distinction. But uh, when you look at her journey, it's been even more special because uh, early on in her tenure, she found her passion, she found her calling, she recognized what she was meant to do in the United States Coast Guard, and that was in our technology space. You know, somebody that uh, fit right in early on in her career. Well, she went to the uh, Antarctic and she was into the Arctic Circle, you know, she understood that there were other things that she wanted to accomplish, and, and quickly found her way onto this very campus serving in our uh, Telecommunications Information Systems Command, which no longer exists, but has a great lineage, and it's got some, uh, some great players in the audience with as well. She's been in our, part of our service technology evolution for 25 plus years at this point. 
Um, she's helped to really ensure that we've got a digitally fluent workforce. And sometimes that uh, takes a little bit of urging, it takes some persistence and patience, getting everybody to recognize that uh, they've got a role in integrating you know, the latest capabilities and technology into the fabric of the day-to-day -day grind of our, our United States Coast Guard. She's truly an engineer uh, with that mathematical and uh, science and technology mindset. Uh, she served in business operations and also in service delivery, you know, on the pointy edge of the mission, mission support business model. All of those under activities underpin truly our operational success as, as a service for the nation. And you've got to make sure all the parts come together. It takes talent, like what uh, Captain Smith has demonstrated throughout her uh, illustrious career, to piece all of that together. As Captain uh, Van Camp said, you know, not everybody gets it, but we need everybody to understand that they have an obligation and a need to try to get it at least. Nobody gets a pass and says, hey, that's not me. You, you no longer have that luxury. So, you know, fortunately, uh, Captain Pitts along the way learned from our greats, but equally as important, she passed that same sentiment and perspective on to her successors, many of you in the audience today. So it's always our obligation to breed the next generation because we need somebody to fill those very capable shoes as well. Dialing in a little tighter, you know, you go from Coast Guard down to the technology arena, but uh, watching Captain Smith over the last three years, you really just could see that exuberance, see that passion on a day-to-day -day basis coming off of her and infecting all of those around her. The artificial, in, in artificial intelligence arena, machine learning, and uh, by extension, you know, the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance elements of the Coast Guard. Piecing all of those emerging concepts together, um, that's a pretty special opportunity and one that uh, Kevin Smith has really been a visionary and a leader for our Coast Guard. She's forged relationships across the DOD. She's really nurtured that interaction with industry, and then she's fostered the connections and the interface across the interagency. If nothing else, the Coast Guard is an agency and organization of partnerships. It's what allows us to be most effective because we can connect across that broad fabric. And Captain Smith does it uh, with distinction, extremely adroit, and being able to pull people together with a common bond and focus even if they didn't realize that they needed to be at the table. She's been able to uh, envision what those new possibilities are. You know, in today it's in the AI space. Just a short, short period ago, you know, it was more focused in the cyber arena. And before that, you could just call it information technology, systems engineering. The lineage goes back in perpetuity, but she's helped to keep pace and keep the Coast Guard moving forward to keep aligned with how the nation and the armed forces and the interagency need to do business today. She's been able to integrate those opportunities. She's got some uh, counterparts from Project Minerva, from Task Force Modessa, and really uh, you know, leadership on the capability front that helped to bring all of those things to life under systems like Minotaur. But it takes a visionary, somebody that can articulate why is that the right solution set? Why is that the journey that we need to make investment on? And why is that important with some of those major capital assets that Captain Van Camp mentioned? Fortunately, she's been able to be convincing and be pers uh, persistent and persuasive. She's helped to persuade those skeptics. She's helped to inspire that next generation of zealots, people like Raven Home and Ryan Taylor and uh, Charlie Epperson, those that are gonna pick up the banner and carry the mantle moving forward. So we need that type of life cycle, but it takes people that can uh, lead with distinction like Shannon has. So Shannon, we're extremely proud of the legacy that you're leaving behind. Um, you know, appropriate at this point where you've decided that it's, it's time to, to make a transition and everybody gets to that end point, and that's okay. You know, whether it's one year or 27 years, every single day is important. But, uh, you know, as you start to embark on that next chapter, as the chaplain mentions, you know, know that your future is bright. 
because you'll be with family and your loving husband Lane in a place that you have chosen to be, which hasn't been what we've afforded you along the way for the last uh, almost three decades. Um, but uh, we really, really wish you the very best in Colorado. Um, take a little time to decompress. Uh, it's, it's important. You know, we've uh, absorbed a lot from you during that journey. Um, but fortunately, uh, you know, no surprise that right now you've already set up Starlink, you know, on the, on the mountain range, so that's good. <laughs> You'll be able to stay connected uh, where and when you need to, uh, especially in those times when maybe family can't be with you. But, uh, you know, I'd ask you to just reflect back as you, as you make that, uh, that transition. You know, you've invested with incredible experience. Um, you've ingrained, been ingrained with the best possible traits and you've had de decades worth of great memories and rich bonds to reflect on. That's going to serve you so, so well, you know, as you think about the, what the new daily grind will be of your own choosing. But, uh, you know, all of those things are what we can offer back to our military members. Uh, things that you can take with you uh, forever and ever, recognizing that you've left your mark on everybody that uh, is still serving or has served in the past. Um, so, you know, that's the special privilege of serving in our armed forces, uh, you know, being on the, the tactical edge of our nation. Um, but, you know, again, we truly want to thank you, which you've given back to the Coast Guard and the uh, interfaces and interactions that you've had with each and every member uh, that you've uh, had occasion to touch along the way. So with that, uh, I'll say Semper Paratus to you all, and Captain Smith, I'd ask you to, to officially join me center stage to talk a little bit more about your most recent accomplishments. So thank you, everybody. the award of the Meritorious Service Medal, Gold Star in lieu of the third, to Captain Shannon Smith, United States Coast Guard. Captain Smith is signed for Meritorious Service as Chief of Coast Guard Artificial Intelligence from June 2021 to May 2024. Demonstrating exceptional leadership, vision, and technical expertise, she established the Coast Guard's first dedicated program office in artificial intelligence through unwavering dedication and innovative thinking. She built a robust portfolio of artificial intelligence initiatives, leveraging cutting edge technologies such as large language models, natural language processing, robotics process automation, and computer vision to modernize the intelligence cycle. She pursued a resource strategy that led to congressional advocacy for 30 new personnel and $10 million for enterprise wide artificial intelligence and data initiatives. Moreover, she secured Department of Defense support for a $125 million dedicated computer vision pipeline and an astonishing $20 million in committed research for Coast Guard initiatives. She drove the development and rapid deployment of artificial intelligence, enabled satellite and aerial detection systems to improve migrant and counter narcotic operations. These enhancements led to a detection of a low profile vessel carrying over 1,300 kilos of narcotics and enabled a foreign partner to interdict a commercial vessel carrying over 2,000 kilos of narcotics across the high seas. Captain Smith's dedication and devotion to duty are most heartily commended are in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Coast Guard. Signed, Rear Admiral Rebecca Orr, Assistant Commandant for Intelligence. Thank you, Admiral Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I would like now like to ask Captain Smith's husband, Lane Smith, to please join us to accept a small token of a recognition for the support he has provided. Come on up, Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Center stage. To all who shall see these presents greetings. This is to certify that Mr. Jeffrey Lane Smith has earned grateful appreciation for his unselfish, faithful, and devoted service during his wife's Coast Guard career. His unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible his wife's lasting contribution to the nation. Given this 28th day of May, 2024, signed Linda L. Fagan, Admiral, U.S. Coast Guard, Commandant.
Thank you. The strength of family bonds in a military family often rely on citizens who bear their own unique sacrifice and departing shipmates <clears throat> sacrifice in service to of our nation. Cal Carol High, Michelle Smith, and Lily Titus, will you please join us? It is my pleasure to express the grateful appreciation of the United States Coast Guard to you in support of Captain Smith as she served her country. You should know that her successful career has been challenging and has required an unselfish devotion to service to others. Her outstanding work was very important for our nation's future. Your dedication has been essential to her success. The United States Coast Guard thanks you for your support. Signed, Jeffrey R. Radekowski, Deputy Assistant Commandant for Intelligence. Thank you, Captain Smith's family. Our next presentations are to Captain Smith. The tradition of presenting a shadow box to a retiring sailor is born of early Royal Navy custom and superstition. Sailors believed that it was bad luck for a departing shipmate's shadow to hit the pier before they did. The crew would therefore construct a box that contained a reflection of their shipmate in the form of select artifacts from their career and carry it ashore ahead of them. The modern shadow box, like its ancient predecessors, represents the accomplishments and memories of an impactful career. The flag was flown over the U.S. Capitol on February 8th and over the C5I Service Center on February 24, 2024, in honor of Captain Shannon Smith's dedication to the United States of a U.S. Coast Guard officer. was flown over McMurdo Station in Antarctica on February 12th on the Polar Star, her first unit in the Coast Guard. In addition to Captain Smith retiring from the U.S. Coast Guard, this also marks her departure from her current unit. It is tradition in CG2 to present the departing member with a plaque. Yes, thank you. Captain, on behalf of the extended CG2 AI team, I want to present this to you and thank you. Uh, we, as a team, we owe our success really to you, uh, to your passion for this unmatched passion and visionary leadership. So thank you on behalf of the team. Uh, we will miss you. And uh, we know that wherever you go, you will continue to pursue quick wins. So thank you. <laughs> invite Army Major Karen Cerruti, retired, to share a few words. Um, Karen's not going to be able to, so, okay, sorry, I didn't get that over to you yet. <laughs> Audience, please rise for the presentation of retirement certificates. <laughs> Captain Smith's 
announcement with a presidential certificate of appreciation from our Commander-in-Chief. The citation reads as follows, Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States. I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Your commitment and dedication have been an inspiration for those who will follow in your footsteps. And for all Americans who join me today in saluting you for a job extremely well done. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., Commander-in-Chief. Final presentation today is a certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To who, to all who she see, to all who shall see these presents greetings. This is to certify that Captain Shannon Smith, having been retired after honorable service in the United States Coast Guard, is awarded the testimonial as an acknowledgement of duty faithfully performed during a period of 27 years done in Alexandria, Virginia, this 28th day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2024. Signed, Linda L. Fagan, Admiral, U.S. Coast Guard, Commandant. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Retired. Wow, I didn't expect it to hit me at the very beginning of just seeing that retired certificate and knowing that retired work was coming. Um, <laughs> um, I, I truly have loved my career. I have loved my time in the Coast Guard. I have loved working with every single one of you. And it has been hard for me let go to say goodbye to this, to this family. Um, and I'm not saying goodbye. You, you are all going to continue to be um, in, in my life and always welcome in Colorado. Um, and that, none of that was part of my original speech. That was just like, so I'm going to jump in here. So thank you all for coming, um, both in person, virtually. Um, some people are going to be mentioned. I think that ended up being virtual instead of coming. Um, Admiral Ryan, thank you so much. Um, thank you for taking the time. As I started to understand just how much I had followed the wonderful path that you created in the career and got to benefit from the units you've been at before, um, it just became so precious and wonderful to be able to have you be my presiding official. Um, you, you get what it means to be in this career path. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that time. Um, and um, it, gee, wow. I mean, being a project officer for this, this is, okay, so this is three times the size of my wedding. Um, I'm not a big formal ceremony person, and it's a military ceremony. Of that. There's a lot of T's to cross and I's to dot. Um, thank you, Eva. Oh, my God. Um, but gee, I didn't think I was going to get the flag over McMurdo and over the Polar Star. That was an amazing experience on an icebreaker. And to go to Antarctica and the Arctic, wow. Um, so thank you for making that happen. That was special. Uh, if we could all, let's do a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> I set up to do the speech last, so this looks like I have I might cry, I might need some water. <laughs> so I, I didn't want my makeup to all tear up before the end. Um, okay, so my, my speech was written by me. It wasn't by ChatGPT, but after a really long version of it, I did use it to fine tune it, I admit. Um, <laughs> so my favorite part of going to the retirements in the past has always been kind of the, the wisdom, the nuggets that I got from everybody, what I learned from just attending these ceremonies. Um, and so my theme today is those lessons that I've learned. Um, and, and what's so incredibly precious to me is the people that are here that I learned from, that came back here so that I could share this moment with them, or that are attending virtually who couldn't come in person. So I'm gonna jump in, Tom and Dan, Dave, you guys. Um, you guys, you taught me that training is morale. You taught me that 
um, that the iteration of being able to go to training, come back and apply it, go back to training, it makes you feel like you can succeed. Um, and I've tried to apply that throughout my whole career with all of the people that I've known. Um, and I encourage all of you, continue to give that training to your people. It is so crucial. You taught me to let people, to, that we need to let our people fail safely. Um, that failure is the best teacher. And um, we need to step in though, because in the Coast Guard, if, if you fail, if you get that black mark, you might not get promoted. And so for all of us, we have to let our people fail where they safely can, but step in if it's gonna be career ending. Um, and that's hard. It requires managing up um, and, and, and then just being there for our people. So thank you for that. Um, and then you really, and I, we haven't solved this one yet, but you've had me thinking about how do our organizations need to adapt. So the internet flattened the world. I need to talk with you afterwards about how we think AI is what, like, is not is beyond flattening the world. And so, but our structures, our military structure, our ICS structure, and as I'm looking at in civilian companies, the civilian company structures, they're all pyramids. Um, so, I haven't figured out what the right organization would be. The, the other, oh, I'm going to throw this one in. You also help me understand that no organization is perfect. No organizational structure is perfect. And so you can reorganize and reorganize and reorganize it, and then you end up breaking the workarounds that are already working. And so to be very <coughs> cautious when you reorganize. Um, I could go on and on. There's so many I learned from, from, this, from the network team here. I was truly, truly honored to work with you. Um, I, Mike Scott is not, was not able to make it in person. Um, I don't know if he's able to be remote, but Mike Scott is out at OSC, the Operations Systems Center, Kernsville, West Virginia. Um, and Mike gave me that seat at the table. He was the division chief, I was the assistant division chief. He would bring me into the meetings when nobody else's assistants were there. He let me see behind the curtain. He let me understand what that higher level was. And that really helped set me up for success. And again, I've tried to pay that forward to my team. And then he, he's an entrepreneur. He owns his own business. Well, he brought that entrepreneurial uh, mindset into work, into our bureaucracy. And he really taught us. And so when I went on to BXO, one of our command tenant philosophies, the, the CEO was great to let us bring our, our views in. And we, we put ownership in one of our command tenants to be able to kind of say, you know, you need to take that ownership and act as if you're a CEO. And, and Emma, or you have said that same thing to us. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, Jan, we had to wait because I needed to have Jan here. And she did get stuck in traffic, people. It's, it's like bad. I mean, other people might have come in and help us to make a got stuck in traffic too. <laughs> you helped me understand along each career step that you're gonna, some doors are gonna open and other doors are gonna close and to be comfortable slamming shut those doors that close and to move forward and not let my decision not to go back to sea. That was tough. And I did. It was tough at sea, but also it was exciting. Um, but I slammed that door shut. I didn't look back and I've had an amazing career. You also guided me to think strategically about the Coast Guard. I mean, I'm an 04 and she's like, how are you going to guide the Coast Guard? I mean, you had me thinking about being an 06 so early in my career. And then you advised me to stay as long as I was having fun. And here I am, I'm a captain in the Coast Guard. I'm still having fun, guys. It's just fun in Colorado with Lane Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, remotely, um, I don't know, it's Chief Warrant Officer Paul Bedeau, he let us call him CM, so I always butcher his name, unfortunately, and Master Chief Colton. Um, they, um, they were amazing. They were my ops and my command chief as my XO, when I was XO in the issue. And uh, relatively junior 04, first time as an XO, they took care of me. That's what our chiefs and our warrant officers do. And, um, and I'm still so honored by that. And um, they taught me that a bad attitude is a cancer that eats away at an organization. Um, and it's our job as leaders to treat that bad attitude quickly, to get rid of that cancer in our organization. Um, and it's hard sometimes to see when that's happening. Um, but they were so accurate, and um, that, that guidance has given me perspective throughout my career. Um, Eric Downs was not able to make it, but he taught me a conquering attitude. You know, he's a Marine, and it's just a different way that the Marines approach life. And in Army too, 
cared. <laughs> um, and, but he, you know, we, we face a lot of bureaucracy in our C5I world. We face a lot of policies and things that we need to do that are all well-intentioned, but that bureaucracy <coughs> often doesn't get implemented as efficiently as it needs to be. And so you have to be persistent. And he was always persistent. And he always came back to the team and he said, we will win. We will win. We will get through this. He gave us that hope and that push whenever we really, really need it. Uh, my team, my Intel team, my AI Intel team. You taught me what it means to trust. If you guys have heard Colin Powell, he'd tell you that the most important thing in leadership is trust. And I've had trust throughout my career, but it is, it is different. I mean, I can, anything I can give you guys, and I can turn and not even blink. You will have it done. You guys work together. You have each other's backs. This ceremony today, this was not, this, G will be the first to tell you, this took the entire team. This is, this took the entire team. It took Eva, Avril. I mean, it's, it's not, this is a lot of details, and they, they all jumped in. Uh, okay, halfway through. Switching gears. My family. My dearest friends um, that have become family. Phoenix water. Um, okay, so I have to start first telling you my um, earlier in career, earlier in my career in 2003, my dad passed away. I was here at this command. And then in 2017, my husband, my first husband passed away. And there are pictures on the table over there. You get to see them smiling. Um, they're smiling down on us. And, and I was here when my dad passed away. That was divine. It truly was. Um, and Eva was here. Eva wasn't, Eva and I have been trying to stay stationed together our entire careers. The only time we were stationed together was here when my husband passed. That, that was divine. So um, I, I just want to thank the Coast Guard, the people who were there for me, who sent me the most beautiful bouquet for my dad's ceremony that I still remember because it just sent, the, they sent their love all the way out to Spokane, Washington. And, and then just the support, the flexibility that the Coast Guard gave me. Like before we did all of this remote work at this degree that we did, they sent me down to Houston to let my Doug go through his final battles. And we worked, I worked from Houston. Mom came in, covered down for me. Mom's always come down and covered down for me. Um, so thank you. Um, and then, okay, so now more, more positive. Thank you to my, my friends from, actually no, I'm gonna go back, I'm sorry. You're always gonna get a little bit teared up and emotional with this. I wanna I want to thank my dad for being a perfect dad. Even though he's in heaven, he's not here to hear it, but he was an amazing role model. And he taught me that politics is about people. And so we often, we, he always avoided politics. I don't like politics, we all write about politics, but politics is just people. He told me not to avoid it, to understand the motives behind the people that is driving the politics. Um, and then of course, I, you know, Doug moved with me five times in the Coast Guard. Uh, he sacrificed a lot of time with me, really. And it hurt you both. And for that, I'm fundamentally sorry, but I'm also fundamentally grateful because your dad was amazing. Um, he is amazing. And he is in both of us. And he is here today. And who I am will be forever changed because of him. So, um, I'm going to jump to some amazing friends from Lake and Heath, England. So I grew up at Aria of Lake and Heath, England for...
no other leader. Uh, you have so much strength, so much resilience. Uh, your love for everyone, it just, it's on her sleeve, it's there for everyone to see. It's genuine. Uh, and I don't think I realized how much it would mean to me to have you be my master of ceremonies. I mean, she stepped from Swap Summer to today. I, how much she did for this ceremony. She was right by my side the entire way. Uh, just, it's beautiful. Okay. My family. My sister. Thank you. She's my older sister. Okay, so... <laughs> she taught me how to take orders. Uh, <laughs> captain or not, she's still the boss whenever we're together, just so it's clear. Um, and, um, and while she still may get joy out of pressing my buttons, she's also the first one to walk through fire for me. She's always been there. Uh, some of my most precious memories, my most precious moments, my most precious future is spent with her and her family, with Leland, Army, uh, Ronan, Rhea, and, and I almost called them my in-laws. So Leland's parents, Air Force, um, it's, they're wonderful times. I love going down to see you. I love being with you. Um, and I could not have achieved, I could not be here today if it wasn't for her. She's taking care of mom. She's taking care of dad, Doug's mom. She's down there in Florida with them. Thank you, Michelle. Lily Bell. <laughs> you already made me cry once. <laughs> your decision to be a daughter, to share your life and your love, it's been an incredible gift. You sacrificed a lot of time with your dad, and it means so much to me that you've come here to celebrate. I treasure that you're a part of my life. I'm excited for the future that awaits if you visit in Colorado with me. I'm sorry to leave you here and even sorry on the East Coast. Um, I thank you for being my daughter and for giving me my beautiful first granddaughter, Ruby Jean. All right, mom. <laughs> <laughs> there was no doubt that mom was going to record every bit of this. <laughs> Even though there's two recorders, I think, in the back. Um, you were my role model. You were my hero. Uh, you moved over 20 times with dad. She has helped me move every single one of my Coast Guard moves. I think 10 official moves, some moves in between. Uh, every single one of those moves, you embraced change. You were excited about the next adventure. You know, my mom has her pilot's license, her advanced open water scuba diver's license, her motorcycle license, her extra ham radio license. She's an outdoor survivalist certified, having built her own igloo uh, by herself. So besides setting that example, teaching me to embrace change, constantly learning how to have adventures, she's also taught me that persistence that's been so critical to Bobby's career. Mom was still service. I mean, she got to step out of her office and look down at the SR-71. It was classified in like flying missions for us. We go over to the Dallas Aerospace Museum now and we look at that and we're just, it's just surreal to spend that time and to go there and it's just so <coughs> special. Um, she also worked at NASA, I'll let you talk with her about that, she loved NASA. Um, and, um, and then when I was in elementary school, my mom talked, to, you know, mom's talking about their kids or whatever, and she talked with her co-workers, and she comes back and she goes, you should be an engineer. So she's planting the seed when I'm a kid, helping it become a goal for me. And then when I talked about the Coast Guard Academy, and I said, hey, I found the Coast Guard Academy in a library. Um, my mom found a reserve admiral for me to go talk to. She coordinated a tour of a Coast Guard cutter, had me talking to the people that all love being in the Coast Guard. So I'm here today as an engineer, retiring from the Coast Guard as a captain because of all you taught me, the opportunities you made for me. Um, so every recognition that I received here today, Mom, is a recognition of you. Okay, final note. Thank you. My adventurous, playful, witty, innovative husband. You make my present and my future incredibly awesome. <laughs> Lane's been on quite the emotional roller coaster with me. Um, it's my, this last job, it's been my absolute favorite. Uh, it's also at times been 
the worst job. <laughs> Fighting for resources at headquarters. <clears throat> Challenge. In other words, of recording. Um, <laughs> it's amazing, though. So, you know, he, he let me bet. He let me cool off when I come over work. But he also understood if you spend too much time venting, it becomes dwelling. And so he would allow me enough time to let off steam, but then he would very artfully change the topic. And that's a skill. And it's one that I, I share with everyone because I, I think that that's just critical. Go then, don't dwell too long, and then change the topic to something more cheerful. Um, it's incredibly fun to share life with somebody who is very intelligent, but also a little mischievous. <laughs> uh, and he's got a heart of gold. Um, I love you with all my heart. I cannot wait for our next chapter. There's so much I could say to all of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for celebrating with me. Please remain standing for the benediction, singing of the Semper Protest and the departure of the official party. The words of Semper Protest are provided in the back of the program. Please feel free to sing along. May we close in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, as we prepare to go our separate ways, we lift to you our brothers and our sisters and all of our armed forces, especially those who are. Space where they can create many more memories. Lord, lead them and cover them with the joy and peace that can come only from you. And now please send us out from here with your blessing, we pray. In the name above all names, amen. Amen. Official party, we cover. <clears throat> Protest, take short to Arctic zone to Europe and Far East. The flag is carried by our ships in times of war and peace. And never have we struck it yet in spite of Roman's might. Who we'll cheer our crews and cheer again for showing how to fight. We're always ready for the call. is our guide, our faith, our glory to, to fight, to save, or fight, and die, I close start, we are for you. Now, Rear Admiral, United States Coast Guard, retired, departing. Now, Captain, United States Coast Guard, retired, departing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the official ceremony. Thank you for attending. Guests are requested to gather out front for a group photo and are cordially invited to join us for a reception here in the Anchorage Club following the photo.